we say in the Apostles' Creed that we believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, what exactly do we mean? Who exactly is this one who is conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary? This Son of God who is begotten from eternity, as the small catechism explanation says. We can say that there never was a time when the Son was not, that He's always existed. He has been God's Son eternally. Without being created, He is eternally begotten. Try and wrap your head around that idea. I'll wait. Actually, I won't, because you can't wrap your brain around that idea of being eternally begotten, and neither can I. Sometimes we try too hard to understand or to come up with an answer for the wrong question. And that's the problem with trying to understand the Son of God and who He is according to His divine nature. Because we want to put Him under a microscope. We want to figure out exactly how both God and man can dwell in the same person, where the God part ends and the man part begins. But we're not given to know that. We're not given to comprehend eternity with our finite and sinful minds. Rather, we are given to hear what the Lord God says to us and to trust that His Word speaks truth and that it tells us what we need to know, even if we don't always get to know what we want to know. It took Martin Chemnitz over 500 pages of really small print to try and suss out just some of these questions and these ideas, and this book... This book on the two natures in Christ is no easy read. So in chapter 6 of John's gospel, Jesus says of himself that no one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. And there's another clue for you about how to understand your heavenly Father, how to understand Jesus. No one can see God and live, Scripture says, yet that same God has given you a way to see Him in Jesus. God dwells among us bodily in Jesus. In Jesus, God reveals to us who He is and what He does for us, things that we could never do on our own and things that we would never even think to do. And that's enough for us here on earth. God the Father sends His Son into our flesh for us and for our salvation. He reveals who the Father is by His miraculous workings in this world. And He acts as the bridge between earth and heaven at the altar. Where His body and His blood bring these two worlds together during the divine service so that we can come into his presence with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise without any fear. That's who Jesus, the Son of God, is for you. We are the pro-life generation. That's what today's high school and university students are calling themselves. Why are youth for life? Lutherans for Life's Why for Life community helps answer the question. Why for Life engages and equips today's learners to be tomorrow's leaders through education, networking, and service. Learn more about bringing Why for Life to your church and school at whyforlife.org. That's the letter Y, the number 4, L-I-F-E dot org.